Yes, actually, um, going back into this fight in Japan, you know, actually I was, they were calling me a world champion and I kept on saying, you know, uh, I need to do some traveling if you're going to call me a world champion. And uh, when I got first invited to Japan, uh, I fought Suzuki and they brought me over to uh, Suzuki and I thought, well, this would be great. But when I got there, they were telling me that I have to wear shorts. And I said, I don't wear shorts. And they're saying, you have to, this is kickboxing, you have to wear shorts. And I said, well, if I have to wear shorts, I guess I'm not fighting. And so they thought that, you know, that Suzuki was gonna beat me anyway. So they figured, ah, let him wear the pants. So they allowed me to wear long pants. And when I was in Japan, it was, you know, it's it's almost like it was such a mystique samurai you know place that it was a uh, first time being there and it was truly i thought uh oh, this is truly great i was really excited i felt like almost i was home but yet i wasn't you know it was like i've been there sometime or another but i felt very comfortable uh, wasn't nervous, wasn't, I was just excited was just to be there. And when we started training, you know, I was there uh, actually a week before the fight. I started training running and stuff. It was truly, it was, I was so grounded, mentally, physically, spiritually, I was so grounded. And so we got into the way and I got a chance to see Suzuki and he had this look in his face and I thought, and you know, actually, he looked at me almost like if I was not a threat to him at all. He, you know, and so I looked, uh, when I looked back at him, I, I, I smiled like, okay, I, I see that it's going to be a great fight. And I, I thought, because this is the first American to go over there and actually fight them at their own at their own sport. They wanted to know who exactly I was. So when we get there uh, into the arena at the Budokan, uh, it was truly a great uh, a great atmosphere of energy. I can see that there's a it, it, I can feel the energy of spirit samurai warriors there, and it was truly exciting. It was exciting to to be in a place that you know you only see in the movies way back then and it was great it was great to to feel that type of energy right from the beginning and being the first American to go there and actually fight them you know um, and when I get there we we get into the ring and the atmosphere it was like a, 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 an arena of warriors that it was I knew going in there, if I did not knock him out, I wasn't going to win. So I knew it was going to be fight to the finish. I knew that in my heart. I said, oh, this is going to, uh, if I don't knock, the, if I don't stop him and knock him out, I won't win. So I knew exactly what I was there for. I knew that I had to be a good finisher. And so in the ring, looking at him, I knew in his eyes, I said, oh, this, this, this warrior here has to prove a point to other Japanese. And this is a matter of honor. Now it's no longer a fight. It's a matter of honor. And I said, okay, this is, this is not just a fight. To him, it's not, I don't know if he's thinking it's a sport. To me, I'm going in as a sport. In his eyes, it looked like he wasn't going in there as a sport. It was about fighting for honor. It was like uh, Japan versus America and, and I can see that without without him saying anything and just the whole atmosphere of it. So going in there in the first round, I knew right off the bat that just you know that uh, Suzuki was truly he was so focused as a warrior as a samurai that he was going to go in there and try to just take my legs right from me. And I already had an experience from the Thai. Uh, fighter, so I already had an understanding how to leg check and so forth. I, so I had a, uh, I understood what Suzuki was doing in the first round that he was just going to take my legs out, and 
after the first round, I knew exactly how it was going to go. And so from that point, I recognized that I was a samurai also. Maybe in another time, but I, I felt that I was in an arena that this was about, you know, this was about truly honor. It wasn't about a sport of, you know, playing a physical game of chess, man. This was about honor. And I knew that I had to go in there, you know, and truly be a good finisher because I knew after the first round, when my brother told me, my brother sat down and said to me, looked it right at my eyes, he says, Brother, you know where you're at. And I said, I know exactly where I'm at. He says, you're, you're, in, you're in a samurai pit. And my brother looked, I looked at my brother and I said, I know. He says, you know you're gonna have to finish him, right? And I looked at him and I said, I'll be a good finisher. And so this dialogue between my oldest brother and myself, Arno and I, I knew, my brother knew exactly where I would, you know, what, what we were there for and what we, I had to do. So he confirmed that go out there and start right now. So when the second round came, I took my ax out and I started to chop just to see where I can actually open up and stop them. By the time the third round came, I knew exactly. I started to pick up the tempo and I started to go because I know that uh, he was after my legs. Okay? And the fourth round came. By the fourth round, I knew exactly. I went into the zone. Once I went into the zone, I said I had all my weapons working at one time. I was going low, I was going high. Even though I knew every time I sat down in a corner, I would look at him in his corner, uh, corner people. They were really, truly pushing the energy into him. And they were all gathering their energy and reminding them who he was and as, a, as a warrior, as a samurai that he had to save faith. And I knew in the fourth round, I said, this is not about a sport now. This is about honor. And this honor, man, he was gonna go out there and try to really, uh, whether he's gonna hurt me or not, the point is he was gonna finish me. And in that, I got excited. I got excited the fact that, okay, now it's time to put really to play a physical game of chess and I poured it on in the fourth round and the fourth round I just changed the gear and I went forward and I started chopping going low high different angles and so forth and every time he I, I made him pay for his mistake every time he missed I made him pay for it by the fourth at the end of the fourth round I knew it's time to finish it and in the fifth round I came I said that's it I, I know all the stops went out and I went in there and I was piercing deep. Everything I was hitting, I was pinching. Every nerve in his body, I was pinching against his bone and cutting deep. And, and just like a, a gladiator, just like a warrior, you know, I came out and I drew my sword and I chopped deep angles of 45 degree angles. And I knew that I, I knew that I hurt him and I didn't let him off. By then, I knew this was the time to finish it. And that's when I started to push it and push it to the point where I hovered him and he couldn't breathe and I knew that. And in the corner, I felt the energy of panic. Like who is this American that will come here and think that they can beat us at our own sport? And I felt that energy, all that collective energy within their corner coming out. And so I wasn't just fighting Suzuki, I was fighting all of them at one shot. And in the crowd, I, you know, the crowd was starting to recognize that I was also a samurai. I was also a warrior. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't somebody, I was somebody to contend with. I wasn't just somebody coming in and they were going to feed me to the lions. They recognized that I was a warrior. And when I stopped Suzuki, it was hard for them to believe that Americans can go there and beat them and stop them at their own game. And so in that, you can see in the corner that so, uh, they were gra actually grabbing Suzuki, grabbing them, shaking them, and pushing their energy and saying, you cannot, you cannot lay down. But I knew I had to stop them completely. Once I stopped them and he couldn't get back up, 
and I knocked him out because I knew there was no other way. It was do or die. I knew I, I had to completely not just uh, just cut him. I knew I had to knock him out. And otherwise, I wouldn't win. And I went out there and I finished him. I finished him to the point where he could not move no more. And the crowd, actually, I won the crowd. They didn't know, you know, who this American with long hair and so forth. They didn't know who I was, but at that point in time. So I got challenged by the champion, just retired. He just retired. Okawa just retired, and Suzuki, the number one contender, became the champion. When I knocked him out, Okawa came out of retirement to save faith of Japan. And, uh, but I knew right there and then that this wasn't the end. It was just the beginning. It was the beginning. So when I came, when I, right there and then, I got challenged again, right after that fight. That same night, I got challenged by the champion that just retired. And I knew from that point on, they was not gonna just lay down. They were gonna actually, they had to save faith. And so in that, started opening for other fighters to come in. And it was, it was to me, it was a great honor because from there, the word kickboxing truly started to go. And it was a way of bringing other fighters to Japan and following me. So when I came back, I came back with a team of five the next time. But truly, Suzuki was, I have to admit, he was truly a strong warrior, a strong samurai. Uh, it's just that uh, I happened to be playing a, a better physical game of chess. He is from Tarzana, California, has a fantastic fighting record. He's been, never been defeated. 99% uh, of his fights are by knockout. This is uh, Suzuki you're looking at from Japan. Suzuki is the number one contender for their world kickboxing title over here. He's very anxious to fight Urquides. This is scheduled, Howard, a nine-round world title match. Both fighters, I understand, weighed in at 142 pounds. They're receiving their last-minute instructions. This should be a great fight. I've had the pleasure of seeing Benny fight before. Benny the Jet, fantastic fellow. Benny is very famous here in Japan. He has his own comic strip. He has a movie that was released here in Japan. And he is actually, he has more following in this Budokan than the Japanese kickboxer does. Is that right? He is a fantastic fighter. He's really cool, really ambidextrous. He'll hit you with everything. Both hands, both feet, constant action. This should be a great fight, world title fight. Of the world title on the line here. Urquidy's uh, philosophy is different than a lot of the karate fighters. He says, hey, I'll fight anybody in the world at my weight, and that's how I'm the world champion. I have a feeling we won't waste too much time. Benny likes to get in there and mix it up. Well, Suzuki's here to fight, too. Uh, he really doesn't have that much uh, respect for Urquidy's. He thinks he's been lucky. Over there. Oh, is that right? You can see there are little laces on the eyes. Uh, you'll find some violations that the referee in the United States would jump on. But over here, the referee is here to just see the fight keeps going. Left, right. He's got him hurt already, Howard. Yeah. He's introducing He's him got to some yes, boxing indeed. techniques indeed. very quickly. Very Fantastic. Quickly. Right into round one. Then he stunned him, spun him around, and kept hitting. Stopped That's him now, of course, trying to place some pressure on him. I think Suzuki's picked up a little respect here very quickly. He's introduced to that uh, American left hook. And he just says, hello there. Look at that. He's in the corner again, position. wailing on him. That's no place to be with Benny. He can really work on you. The whole style of fighting has changed over here since the Americans came in. Uh, the Americans, uh, they used good, 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 good kick. Right kick. kick. As you notice, uh, Benny, has, he always acknowledges. He gets hit and he acknowledges it. Now, he always has been known as a great sportsman. Are those knees uh, legal, Howard? The knees, uh, we've had to agree to that the knees to the body are legal. Uh, our fighters will probably not use use them, but uh, they have to accept they're going to get them. As I was explaining before, uh, Urquidy's is the, he is the big thing here in Japan. He really is. It's kind of a lazy peel-out kick. A grapple. Like I say, he shows great sportsmanship. Ooh! That was a combination, I think, Howard. It looked like he had the foot on the hook and the, and the left. I don't know if they'll count it as no, a No, I think they're going to... There, there's the left hook. Beautiful left. Second left hook, finishing.
misses or misses or the finish would be right here. Suzuki trying to keep his hands up. That's the problem with Benny. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. Right to the body. Benny really mixes it up. He'll go from toe to head. A little slow motion action here. There's, There's that, that left, left hook. Good left hook. Suzuki trying to come back. Misses with a second left hook or it would have been all over. Back to live action. Round two. Fighters coming out fast now. They've, they've looked at each other over. Ooh, Benny, another left. Very good. Wow. Fantastic fight. Benny's an excellent boxer. I think uh, Suzuki, he's carrying his hands wrong to, to compensate for what Arkiti throws. He's still fighting like a traditional Japanese kickboxer. Benny, a real technician. He just really gets in and concentrates. What totally confuses him, Look there's that another, another Ooh. left, strong left. Benny's coming straight in with him. Looks like the boxer's holding his hands high, yet apart. Benny's just going right in between them. There's a right. The Japanese fighters get kind of confused. They expect to meet in the middle of the ring, as I said before, and just duke it out till somebody falls down. And the Americans don't do that. They move. Mm -hmm. They laterally as well as back and forth, yeah. And it throws the Japanese uh, whole tempo off. He steps away from it. They're not then counters. Suzuki does seem confused. He's not quite sure. We've got roughly a minute to go in this round. Good fight, Howard. Benny looks like he's really studied. There it is. You could just see him stick it with it. Just really lining him up. He's making him pay hard. Every time Indeed. Suzuki tries to kick him in the legs, there, good round kick by Indeed. Suzuki. He's far from uh, had it. Suzuki is just really trying to figure out his fight plan. Look at the size of that referee. He's one of the Japanese wrestlers over here. He Beautiful controls wrestler. the ring. Yes, he does. Suzuki's starting to lead from the nose. About 30 seconds to go in this round. Beautiful right uppercut by Suzuki. He's still looking over his opponent. He's getting in some good shots. Is this scored on points also, Howard? Yes, it's scored just like boxing. Uh, who's carrying the round on a 10-point must? Just about at the end of this round. And we'll be right back for another full contact Roddy round. <laughs> round three of a possible nine. I say possible, Howard. The way these guys are going at it may not last that long. No, I don't think they're going to go the distance either. Close in fighting. Look at those hands of Ben. Just really working out this. We get a chance in there to have a report now on the last fight. Uh, we'll try to slip that in that Freddie Avilas, his knee was hurt. The doctor recommended that he not continue the fight. He could be damaged permanently. So the uh, Japanese were not too happy about it, but uh, Freddie Avilas' corner man did... Uh, stop the fight. That's well, a tough way to lose a fighter, to end a fight. What'll happen now? He'll actually be uh, considered TKO? Yes, the official ruling is yeah. that the uh, Sato wins by TKO. These guys are really mixing it up. Close in knees. They have a habit of doing that. As you can see, those knees will try to throw them into your thigh muscles, which really slow your legs down. And that's another little move that they like on the break. In the United States, we don't do that, but in here they throw stuff on the break. Uh huh. The Thai boxers like to do that a lot, too. They'll work on the legs to try to uh, uh, stop your action, then go to work on the upper part of the body. Look at that left by Benny. Looked like he tried a judo throw. Yes, he, yeah. I think the body's too slippery, but uh, the throw is allowed. It is a legal move in here. Excellent action. Round three. Petiti's beginning, in my opinion, to take control of the fight. He's now stalking his opponent, looking him over. Talking to you is Howard Hansen, President, World Karate Association. I'm Bob Perry, United Karate Studios. Bob, you've been announcing uh, karate for, what, 13 years now? Yeah, something like that, Howard. I've been in it uh, just about 20 years now. And I've been announcing, but look at the blood. Uh-oh. Yeah? There is. I think that, that wasn't a knockdown. The kiddies said, no, nah, you didn't knock me down. <laughs> <laughs> just shaking his head. The crowd thinks so, though. <laughs> that was a slip. Mm-hmm. Any flat work on the head, too? See a little blood. Coming from Suzuki. Looks like a nosebleed, though. Nothing really serious. We're back in the live round four here. Round four of a possible nine. World-class fight. World title match. Uh, Irkidi's philosophy is you have to fight everyone in the world. You beat everyone in the world, you're recognized as the world champion. He's never hidden behind the fact that he has a title. You'll fight anyone that'll come into the ring with him. How well organized is the uh, full contact karate thing going now? 
Well, the World Karate Association has become well established uh, not only in the United States, but foreign, and that's the only way you're going to bring him in. Uh, Ooh, another nice left by Benny. He's really pounding away that left hand. The international scene, the World Karate Association is into Australia, into Japan, into Canada, Mexico, besides the United States, and this is the way you really develop a, a world sport. Well, in Benny's case now, what would his official title be? Benny is the world, as we call him now, the world super lightweight champion. The top of his weight is at 142 pounds. We're gradually bringing the weights to the same thing as the kickboxer and the boxing so that they all have a common weight division. A lot of our guys like to box. Sure, look, both of them look a lot bigger than 142 pounds. Ooh, good Ooh, spinning back. Yes, that's, that's spinning back yet. That's something they don't see here in Japan, and the, the fans really, uh, they enjoy that kind of move. You can notice how Rikides picks him up and walks him over the corner. That's how he's going <laughs> to break it up. Come here. <laughs> I got a message for you. <laughs> Excellent fight. Yeah, you're right. He gets him right back over the corner and wants to work on it. Yes. They don't want to stay in the middle of the ring. That's our fighters. They don't want to be trapped in the corner, and they don't like to get tied up in the middle of the ring because then the Japanese will well, use knees. And he just missed with a heck of a right. I think any one of those shots he's thrown, if, if it had hit square, Suzuki would be out. Looks tired. Both of them look a little bit tired. They haven't wasted any time. They've been going at it. Japanese fighters are very surprising, though. They, they look like they're out of the game, and all of a sudden they'll come screaming back and win the fight. They'll wear the other fighter down from beating them. There nice left hook. Good, good yeah. left hook coming in. A little corner action here before we start round five instructions from both corners. I was going to, well, this is going into round five. I was about to say, I, I don't know what the point system would be at this point. It's pretty close, but I, I would say Benny is at home. Uh, I would think it would, but we have the, the Japanese um, judges here, and they favor like that kick that you just saw below there. The Americans, you really wouldn't score that at anything, but they do. They score it as... Oh, look at that right, Howard. He's beginning to tag lead right. Yeah, yeah. I expected... Uh, Suzuki to be in a lot better shape. He looks really tired. Benny's taking a lot out of him. Yes. Our fighters work the body. If you, you notice some of the body shots. You, you never see the Japanese fighters uh, work to the body. And they, the American karate fighter feels like the uh, the boxer does. You know, kill the body and the head will die. Yeah, I've noticed that. They seem to be either headhunters or just going right down to uh, to the legs. To right. Try to they they sell very little body. Good. Look at Benny concentrate. He really wants this one. He wants that clean shot to get mm -hmm. it started. A real killer instinct. Just look him over. Suzuki's face is really beginning to puff yeah, up. Yeah. He's bleeding from the nose. He's caught a lot of shots. We've got roughly one minute to go in this in this round. Now, he's tired. Doesn't seem to have the zing in his kicks he had before. Look at Benny Chudder. Yeah. In close. I don't think that's uh, Benny's blood. I, I believe that's Suzuki's that's on his face. Suzuki's, right? Yeah. A great fight. Tremendous action. Combination of boxing and karate. Full contact karate. You can see Fujiwara, who's a famous Japanese champion, screaming at Suzuki as to what to do. But I think Suzuki's saying, hey, you get in here and do it. Got about 30 seconds. Suzuki looks tired. Very tired. Benny senses it. Reed clenching with him. Look at him move on the inside. Right, left combinations, uppercuts. Just really perfect. There goes a mouthpiece. Suzuki looks really hurt. Benny wants back in the action. Suzuki's getting a standing eight count. He may be out. The round's almost over. Maybe saved by the bell. We're ready for round six, Howard. Suzuki, I think, was hurt, obviously, at the end. His handlers have been working on him. We're going into round six. I've seen these kickboxers bounce back like uh, they've never been touched. They come out fresh and they come out swinging. They really have great handlers, don't they, Howard? Oh, they do. They've got tricks we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah, so yeah. Well, they're not wasting any time. They're going right back at it. Suzuki's going on the attack. Try to take the legs away from Benny if you can. Oh, oh good, good, good high round, round kick there. followed by... Oh, Benny's left. He's down. He's down. Benny hit him with several combinations. The mouthpiece is out. I don't know, Howard. I don't know if he can go on. I would think in the United States they'd probably stop the fight here, but yeah. uh, in Japan I would say no. They, they They're counting. They're, they're, he's coming back in to fight again. My gosh, you're right. Benny right back on him again. Combination lefts, rights to the head. And he's down again, second time. 
Uh, in the United States, definitely, we'd stop the fight here. His corner is saying, get back in there, and I think he's saying, you get back in there. <laughs> he looks like he's had it. Should stop it. No, they're no, going. No, no, they're going, 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 going again. Then he right on back in He again. knows he's got him on Dream Street. Look at that left. Oh, he's not going to get up from that. That's, that's it no, right no, there. He's that's, that's the end that's of it. it. He's out. I can't believe he could get up after that. That's the end of the fight. Uh, Benny has successfully defended his world championship here in Japan again, and uh, he's becoming a famous person in Japan. They oh, yeah, are excited. Even the fans love him. Fantastic. That's his brother, isn't it? Yes, Arnold Akiti's walking him around. They're declaring him the winner. Indeed. No question of that. Doing his famous Benny the Jet backflip. He <laughs> does that after every one of his knockouts, and he's got a long line of them. He still looks fresh, too. Well, they're really working on Suzuki. I sincerely hope he's okay. I think he's all right. We've well, got some slow-mo here. Yeah. I think this is the, the knockout, the very last Yes, hour. we'll take a quick look at this uh, as we leave the Budokan. We hope you've enjoyed this series. There'll be more full-contact fights from all over the world uh, showing some of these champions. This is Bob Perry and Howard Hansen coming from the Budokan. See you real soon. <laughs>